Welcome back, everyone. This is the Offload Delay Podcast, a podcast for first responders and for everyone who's not a first responder but is curious about our world and what we do. Very special guest today, a very uh, touching, emotional, and uh, absolutely admirable guest and topic today. Um, I'm very privileged to have a lady who originally... Early on, was an aquatics person, a lifeguard, became an instructing specialist, and then actually became an aquatics coordinator. Uh, She's also a a mom of three children, and I've recently learned through a a previous discussion that there's now five children involved. So she's busy, that's for sure. Uh, Quite an age range. We'll talk about that when, uh, when we bring her on. Sarah is her name. We're going to get into the formal intro in a minute. And she's a courageous survivor uh, of someone who's had to endure the pain and suffering of losing a loved one to the devastating effects of PTSD and mental illness as a whole. It's a heavy topic for us responders. It's a heavy topic for our families. It's a heavy topic for anyone who's involved with anyone in the world of first responders. Um, I'm going to shortly be introducing you formally to Sarah Routier Clark. I'm sorry, Sarah, the the French part of it was butchered a bit. I'll let you correct me. Sarah lost her husband tragically July 2018 to suicide. Her husband, Sylvain Routier, was an officer with the Ontario Provincial Police, and he tragically took his own life following a battle with mental illness. This mental illness was likely caused by the stress of being a first responder and being an officer protecting us citizens in the communities in which he lived. The story is tragic and one that this guest has had to tell time and time again uh, through all the pain and through all the, the memories and the emotions you can only imagine that it's it causes to bring back uh, from having to tell the story time and time again however this lady's no fool she's actually quite intelligent and what she did was something completely amazing admirable and truly um, so respectable that i knew that i had to bring her on as a guest Sarah decided to become, amongst everything else she's involved with, an author. And she wrote a book. And she wrote a book telling her personal story of the loss she suffered. And all the pain, emotions, the roller coaster of of sheer raw emotion she describes and has had to endure. This book is called, um, let me bring it up here. called Don't Forget Your Roots. And as you can see there, Sarah is the author. It's it's her story. It's her story of losing uh, Sylvain to the effects of mental illness. And it's a book that was written not only for first responders, but for all of us responders who have families, friends, anyone close to us that believe um, there's more to learn about this. I, I fully believe, I can't endorse this enough, all responders, all their families, all their immediate friends, anyone close to a first responder, anyone dealing with mental illness in general, uh, regardless of their job or, or their profession, should read this. It's a fantastic read. It was an emotional read. It was a tough read for me. Fortunately, it was a short read um, because me, books, not so good anymore. I kind of tend to just lose my attention span fairly quick. And that was not the issue here. So I'm going to bring Sarah in now. Um, and we're going to discuss a few things and I want to really thank her and, um, introduce her to the rest of you out there. So for now, beside me, Sarah, welcome. Did I put you your name enough? No, you you did great. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's a very tough topic. It's a very deep topic. And I know you become such an advocate and you become such a 
voice for us responders and the families and friends around us that uh, I thought it was inevitable that I had to get you on this podcast, considering what we deal with on this pod and what our overall premises of the greater good of everybody around us. And I wanted to personally thank you in front of everybody for your amazing work. As I said in the intro, we're not going to dig into the details of the book. First and foremost, I think that book has so much information and I couldn't do it justice in this podcast. And I don't think you need to tell your story again. And I think everybody should go buy the book or get the book and read the book so that they figure it out themselves. So congratulations on that. Um, what's life been like as an author? What's changed? Well, thank you, Brad, so much for that introduction and, and for having me and for this conversation. It's a conversation that is very difficult and a lot of people aren't willing to talk about. So the fact that you're recognizing uh, how important this is, um, I, I appreciate that very much. So so thank you for having me. Um, life as an author uh, is interesting. Uh, I really focused on sort of writing the book and just wanted to get the story out there. I uh, wanted to share what happened to Sylvain so that uh, other people, other families, other first responders could hopefully learn from his story and his passing. And um, really my, my biggest goal, my biggest accomplishment was just having a copy of the book in my hands. I didn't really think through you know, what would happen next? <laughs> um, you know, if, if people bought it and read it, that was sort of a, a bonus for me. And uh, obviously that was the purpose was to try and get it out to as many people as I can uh, in hopes that it would um, help somebody out there recognize, you know, things in themselves that maybe they need to, um, to be cautious about, to um, think about preventive measures for their mental health, um, as a spouse, as a first responder, I found there was um, very little in terms of uh, resources or support or help uh, when Sylvain was struggling. So, you know, the, um, there was a lot of big things that I wanted to, to accomplish with the book. And uh, I'm just happy it's done, to be honest. I don't know if I'll ever write another book. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very admirable that you were able to sit down and focus your emotions, your your energies, and, and be so productive and so concise, if you will. It's a, it's a very um, quick read. And I think that's encouraging to a lot of people because they know they could, and, and it's a quick read because of how well it's written, of how intent, intense the content is, how relevant it is. And I know for me personally, we share geographic areas and a lot of this book took place my own backyard in my own neighborhood and I, I kudos to you I know you've had some success with it I've read different things uh, you were in our local media promoting the book with a picture of uh, when the book was being written it wasn't done yet it was in our local newspaper and there was a picture of you and Sylvain here and in that article uh, it was a great article promoting your strengths and your accomplishments and how you had planned, not had finished, you'd planned to write this book. <laughs> and I'm sure you're glad you're through the trials and tribulations of writing itself and publishing and having, um, I've published in the scientific journals and those worlds in my schooling, but never on a, on a level of a book like that. So I can only imagine the the administrative and logistical hoops as well that go around with your story. We, um, I imagine you had quite a network of support writing it, um, yeah. editors or publisher. Like, how did yeah, that come? Yeah, how did it work? Um, so it really came came about from many many people mentioning that I should write a book. You, you should, you know, get the story uh, down on paper. Uh, part of it was um, being able to have something that I would be proud of, that my kids could someday really be proud of what I've done. And um, proud of, you know, Sylvain's story is still helping other people. So, um, you know, it started by just a lot of people telling me I should write a book. And I thought, 
geez, I can't even write an essay. Like, <laughs> how am I going to do a whole book? And um, I started one day with just writing out chapter titles. I, I had about 25 chapter titles. I could sort of list, you know, a chronological order of our lives, um, Sylvain's struggle, stuff that had happened after his passing. And then I had been very fortunate to speak at many conferences. I had been asked to speak at our, with our local um, uh, paramedics. Some volunteer fire departments had asked me to speak. Um, some uh, OPP detachments. I spoke at a few conferences. So I just basically took my speech and um, had it all down on paper and, and started filtering through and putting you know paragraphs in the different chapters. And then I sat down one day and it, it was really when COVID started and kind of need to fill my time with stuff. And I thought, well, I'll just start, I'll start, tr I'll try and write a chapter. How hard could it be? And I thought I'll start with something easy. So I started with the chapter about how Sylvain and I met and how we fell in love. And it turned out to probably be one of the hardest chapters for me to write because it brought back um, so many emotions of how, uh, you know, our love story and how we met. And it was sad for me. So you know, I, I kind of went one chapter at a time. And then um, I heard something where you can hire a ghost writer. And uh, I posted on Facebook just to my friends and family saying, you know, does anybody know of a ghost writer? And sure enough, somebody referred me to um, a ghost writer slash editor out of Toronto. And uh, we had a few phone conversations and um, she understood my vision and my story so well. She, um, used to teach preventative um, uh, suicide prevention courses to youth. Um, so she got what this what this would mean to get the story out. And uh, it was a lot of just back and forth. Um, you know, I had a chapter called uh, Aquatics, my career, and it was blank. I, ha I hadn't even written anything in it yet when I sent it to her. And she started, um, you know, prompting me with a lot of questions and we would, she would prompt me with questions. I would, you know, write a few paragraphs, send it back to her. She'd prompt me with more questions. And uh, we just kind of went back and forth like that for about six months and um, had to think through a little bit more of how we wanted to start the book, how we wanted to end the book. I knew the ending, I really wanted some information for first responders, some information for spouses and information for organizations on things from my situation that I thought people should know about or, or, or people could change. And then I also wanted lists of resources. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of research and found a lot of, um, you know, treatment centers, different organizations um, through Ontario, through Canada that, that could be helpful for first responders or their, their family members um, to find out. Um, once it was all down on paper, um, she advised me I should just self-publish it. It, it. It's not that difficult to self-publish and I had come this far. So, um, you know, she set me up with a few different companies and it, it was just a matter of downloading, uh, you know, the cover image and, and the, the inside con uh, content and uh, the self-publishing part's probably been the easiest. And uh, my next steps are now in the process. I think in about the next week, uh, the audiobook should be ready. So um, I've got someone, uh, it's not my voice, it's a professional voice. Um, because I know, like you mentioned, Brad, for a lot of first responders, reading can be really hard. Uh, even for myself, I find um, if I try and sit down and read a book, my mind just wanders to other things. I have a really hard time concentrating. I think it must be um, a trauma response, right? you go back to thinking of deep things. So I knew it was important. I had a lot of people asking me for an audiobook, So that should be ready in about the next week. And then uh, the next part I'm looking at is having it translated in French. Um, Sylvain was from Quebec and has a lot of family and connections uh, in the first responder world there. And I've had a lot of people actually even from Hawkesbury area, Ottawa, ask me if it was going to be translated in French. So, so that's the next thing that uh, I'm working on, just getting some quotes right now, because I want to make sure it's done properly. Good. But, I'm so um, happy to hear yeah, that it's thank moving you. forward, that it, this was basically the beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned there you wanted something your kids to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you, uh, you've done that. Oh, thank you. You've accomplished that already, what you've done. And I, when I say I have a hard time reading and that I agree with you, our minds are busy. 
Um, and that takes me back to school, which you're involved in right now, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. But and all the reading you had to do in school. And quite often when I get time to read, I'll try and read and I'll be sound asleep or I'll be wandering, I'll be doing something. But this story, nothing like that nothing whatsoever like that it was actually quite gripping and i need to thank you personally for it because it highlighted some things to myself as a first responder that i wasn't aware of and i think that is your goal i think that is your point where it's hard time sometimes for us to step back and to look as a fly on the wall at ourself and um, there was times, I'm going to be honest with you, I had to put the book down mm-hmm. because it was deep and, but I wanted to read it, but it, I had to be in the right place to read it. I was trying to read it at, at the fire hall sometimes. And I'm like, I cannot, I cannot do this right now. Um, but it, it changed my behavior. Um, I'm going to openly say to everybody on this podcast that up until that book, I did not seek professional mental therapy of any kind after 20 plus years of dealing with first response jobs and as a medic and a firefighter alongside the officers the corrections the nurses the telecommunicator all of them um i i was much like most where i thought you know what maybe if i feel i need it and you raised a very good point in your book that quite often we react to those instances we're not proactive we don't kind of go out and do our own mental therapy as we do our physical therapy a lot of us in these jobs policing especially firefighting we prefer to be in the gym three four or five times a week working on our physical wellness trying to do the job keep fit for the job that way and when you said people don't think about the mental aspect of it 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 was a switch with me and I could tell that I needed to talk to someone because some of the things in your book were, uh, in fact, um, relevant to me and I could see some traits and, uh, and some of those aspects. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to at least start that. So I've, I've started, it's a start. I have somebody now that I, I think I'm trusting and wanting to talk to monthly every other month, just preventative maintenance is what it is right now Mm -hmm. and so thank you thank you a lot for that and this is only a little tiny glimpse of the information in this book and as you said at the very end the number of resources i i was going to count them and i didn't that you provide is is amazing there's phone numbers there's uh, links for web-based help there's addresses names there's locations it's unbelievable and for all diff- different aspects of mm-hmm. of uh of resources and help for us responders and the families and the close friends mm-hmm. so kudos to you for that um i can't encourage everybody uh, enough to get out there and, and to pick up this book and i know it's your goal you and i discussed it should be your goal anyway if it's not but i think it is that every first responder in the province and maybe further has to read this book as part of their either their initiation or their ongoing mental awareness uh, as part of our job. And I really want to be an advocate with you, with these employers, to get this book in the hands of as many responders and their loved ones as possible. And I think that's where I would like to see this go with your audio, with your French versions, with all of it is I know you have a very strong network in policing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's the side where you were closest, uh, most closely related to. But you now have a side in paramedics, which you, you, you mentioned already, and, and in firefighting. So let's, I'm such a, a fan of what you're doing. I, I want to really throw my support out there. And we'll, we'll talk about that more mm-hmm. when we're done. And that's, I want to see more of this. I want to see... <laughs> some book signings going on. I want people to get these copies. And and unfortunately you said this is on hold right now. Uh, it just depends on the location. So that one I just did recently at uh, the Ontario provincial police, uh, their association had their AGM. So uh, with COVID protocols in place, I was allowed to sell and sign some books. Um, 
just depends on the local local chapters, uh, that type of stuff uh, aren't quite allowing it uh, yet, but I'm more than willing to go anywhere. <laughs> my copy is signed and it's not going mm -hmm. anywhere. I'm yeah. Not one close. <laughs> yeah, it's not getting out of my hands anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Now, not only the book, you've since been part of so many, I don't know if I can name them all, I'm going to try and name a few, mm -hmm. uh, panels, commissions, boards, uh, groups, discussion groups, advo advocacy groups. Um, I know the OPP commissioner mm -hmm. assigned you to a mental task force board. Is that mm -hmm. not right? For, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Which is amazing. Um, the amount of officers that work in this province, I, I can probably count on a few hands how many the commissioner reaches out to personally. Mm -hmm. And that is kudos to you and what you're doing. And I'm so glad you're involved with that aspect of it. You've also recently been involved with the Wounded Warriors Canada. Mm -hmm. And with that, you have a panel. Uh, I have it here. It's the spousal. Is it surviving spouses program? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, so and, Wounded War yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I'd rather oh. you explain because I oh, know okay. the title. Barely, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. Wounded Warriors is an amazing organization, especially for uh, first responders and their spouses. They've got uh, a variety of different programs, um, uh, trauma resiliency programs, uh, PTSD, and they recently created one called Surviving Spouses. So it's for widows or widowers that have lost a first responder, uh, either in the line of duty, due to su suicide, cancer, heart attack, any, any forms of really how they would have passed away. And it's open to spouses all across Canada. And it's, it, it, ugh, I can't even say enough how much it helped me with healing and, um, going through figuring out the motions and the healing process involved in a traumatic loss and being able to make connections with other widows that were going through the same thing. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be asked to go back, um, as a peer supporter. So I just did my first peer supporting program, uh, last week where, um, I then went as uh, someone who has taken the program and can help um, the, the surviving spouses um, go through the program themselves. So um, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's a club you never want to be part of, um, but so thankful that there's organizations um, such as Wounded Warriors. Camp Faces is another one, Camp Faces, um, for widows um, that have, have lost uh, a first responder. And we, we need to be honest that sometimes you need to have some resources in place just in case, just yeah. in the event. And, and again, some proactive um, promotion here is there's nothing wrong with that. So that mm -hmm. if and when the unfortunate time comes for any of us to need any resource, we know that there are options out there. And I think you're highlighting that Um at an epic level right now, the amount of resources that you personally are bringing forward are the legwork involved for people to find that out on their own would be, it would be just all consuming. Well, and it's hard whenever you're trying to support someone that's struggling. So that was the biggest thing was when Sylvain was struggling through his mental illness, I didn't know where to turn to or where I could get some resources or help or support. I tried doing some Google searches on my own, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but only came up with um, options in the U.S. And I knew, uh, you know, that wouldn't be an option for us. So I didn't know about anything. Um, as a, you know, a spouse for 13 years of a police officer, why didn't I know about, you know, different programs and what his association could offer? And so it's just not something that you are proactive in looking for until you need the help. And when you need the help, sometimes it's so difficult um, to reach out. Uh, you know, Sylvain did not want me interfering in his career. He did not want people to know he was struggling. So, um, you know, it, sometimes it's easier if you have it all in the back of a book you can refer to when you do need right. that information. And, and you know what? It takes so little space, so little room. It's tucked away. It's there. And, and we all appreciate you, you doing that for us. Now, I'm going to warn you. You're probably going to get um, contacted by a lot of people um, <laughs> moving from not only this podcast, but from the work you're doing um, from this point on. 
even more so than you already have as people learn your story as people learn your value valuable uh experience your resourcefulness that you can you can be um i've posted your socials at the bottom here for the last few minutes on the podcast so it's sarah routier Mm -hmm. routier which is it i'll go with whatever you (laughs) sarah routier author and i'm saying that one out loud in case people aren't watching the youtube stream of this that they're on either apple or, or spotify doing the audio version and that's for facebook and instagram sarah routier author and you told me you have no problems giving out that no not at all handle because i'm sure you're willing to at least steer some people in the right direction or provide a bit of um comfort or or information or something just something to reach out to along with this long list of resources is that correct yes absolutely i've, I've had many people reach out to me in the last couple of years even before i wrote this book um, sometimes it helps to know that somebody understands what you're going through as a spouse or as a first responder um, because it's not talked about people don't talk about suffering through mental illnesses or you know losing someone to suicide or suicidal idolation. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes it is really great to be able to just reach out and connect with someone who gets it. And uh, I'll try my best to steer them in the right direction. What, what I want to mention is at no point in time have I ever heard the word financial gain, money. You're doing this to, to, to become rich. And I also need to highlight, um, I'm often asked if this podcast is money it's there's no money involved for me this is a pay it forward this is a it it does me some good to have guests like yourself on and it i i'm sure the level of um, sincerity is unmatched for you you, what you're doing here and again i'm going to say it over and over we we all thank you for stepping forward Mm -hmm. and um I also want to mention we we talked about the OPP commissioner contacting you personally. You were actually called by the chief coroner. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, in my world, I've dealt with coroners before as part of my job. Never the chief coroner, and at that point, they're also not just contacting you, right? They're they're asking some thoughts, some opinions. Mm-hmm. What is your take and and that is just so fantastic that they're willing to include you in this process, but even more fantastic that you're willing to be included. Yeah. Um, Thank you. You also have been contacted by our premier. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. You received uh, a yeah. premier Ford personally. He you? has my cell phone number. <laughs> well, there you go. Some responders on this may cringe at hearing that, but the yeah. overall message is uh, honestly, in all sincerity, it's uh, it's very um, noble and and good for you for literally reaching the top levels of these individuals that mm. we all service, work for in the services in this province. These are these are our biggest bosses, and they're reaching yeah. out to you for help, and you're not saying no, no. I'm okay. I don't need to be included. You're stepping up. Well, thank and, you. It's, not, okay. it's something that, I mean, I, I don't do this, like you said, for the financial gain or for the recognition, but when key people are noticing um, that, you know, I have something to say and uh, Sylvain has a story that we all need to learn from and, you know, they're contacting me or asking me to be part of uh, Chief Coroner's report on um, police suicides in our province or on the Commissioner's uh, Healthy Workplace Board, uh, Doug Ford calling me and just thanking me for what I've done so far and letting me know that um, uh, there's going to be a provincially funded um, treatment centre in Caledon opening in the next couple of years at some point for specifically for first responders. And he invited me to come and check it out when it's uh, when it's ready. So it is nice that, you know, what, what I've done is gaining some attention from some key people and uh, hopefully they're recognizing that, you know, mental illness and first responders is important to learn about and to, to create programs and funding for 
because it's not going away anytime soon, especially with COVID and, um, you know, all during COVID, we were thanking our first responders and, and frontline workers. Um, and, you know, I'm concerned now that when COVID's over and things start to slow down, those frontline workers, how this is going to affect their mental health and, um, you know, key, key things need to be in place. And, eliminating stigma and making sure that organizations have resources in place for their employees and their members um, is going to be really important in the next little while. I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm living it right now. Um, I'm, I'm witnessing some of my very strong colleagues and friends of through the workplace friends crumbling and people that you always thought were the pillars of these corporations of these businesses of these services are showing that we're just human and the cracks are there. And as you say, the pandemic is just pushing those cracks even harder and spreading them. So I, I, I commend you for that forethought. Uh, it, it's absolutely true. And we could probably go on all day about just that aspect. And I hope to have you, I'm going to, I'm not leaving you yet, but I hope <laughs> we, we can have you on again, even with some other guests together. And we'll, we'll see where things are at as time progresses with that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to do you any justice by trying to name all of your accomplishments of recent um, time. Uh, one, though, I want to mention is you're the vice president in the Eastern Region OPP Beyond the Blue. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know how you, how you manage to incorporate yourself into all of these panels and boards and that but I'm so glad that you do because you are also a voice for all of us and if the premier is calling you if the OPP is calling you if the chief corner is calling you it's like you can now say what we're all trying to say and, mm -hmm. and it's so important to to have you in that role and the fact that you're willing to do it is it's completely fantastic so thank you you've also why stop there? I'm going to, this, this image is a little bit tough to read, but it's the Sylvain Rotier Memorial Foundation that you've created, mm -hmm. right? And this is a memorial foundation that you are providing. There's, I've, I've read in there, there was some, some grants available, some funding available, some resources yes. available. So did you want to just kind of touch on this foundation in memory of Sylvain? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, the foundation started just uh, locally here in Belleville. Uh, quite a few police officer friends of Sylvain's wanted to do a fundraising event to raise money for myself and um, other family members that had lost an OPP officer to suicide. And we did a golf tournament uh, shortly after Sylvain passed away. And it was such a huge success. Everybody asked, you know, can we make this an annual thing? And I said, sure, let's do it. I want to be a part of it. But um, maybe we can put the money towards something bigger that can help a lot of people. So uh, with, with a lot of help, we incorporated uh, the Sylvain Rootsy Memorial Foundation. And now we do an annual golf tournament, an annual hockey tournament and some other smaller fundraisers. And uh, we hand out some local uh, scholarships. So we have four local um, high school scholarships right now. And we have um, a scholarship at Loyalist College. Uh, and we also help donate funds to different organizations uh, that will help first responders get help that might not be covered by the workplaces. Um, so one, for instance, that we've donated to is Project Trauma Support. And um, it's not a, a the funding can be very difficult to get to treatment specific treatment centers, especially for first responders. So, you know, it's um, it's another part of this legacy that I, you know, I mentioned earlier about um, I'd like my kids to be able to hand out the scholarships at graduation ceremony someday and and make them feel like their dad is really helping people. Excellent. And you know what? Kudos to you. And I, that's how you and I formally met. That's right. <laughs> was at the golf tournament. I was invited to join with our local first responders. And I knew your story vaguely, definitely not to the level I've come to learn it. And I remember from being in the area of you worked at a pool that uh, we were required to certify at for my job. And so we've had encounters over the years and certain contacts. But mm -hmm. that network of friends and colleagues 
resources that you're creating with that foundation is phenomenal because it goes far beyond the dollar value even just being able to have a discussion like this and for me to now be seeking my own mental therapy route all became honestly from that golf that golf tournament Mm -hmm. that's what's come of that so amazing work i i hope people can can look that up and can join us i i've been in touch with our network powers that be if you will this is on the deanblundell.com network and him and i have discussed about having him and some of his more name worthy uh friends join in the tournament and to try and get some even perhaps next year we'll do the podcast from the tournament oh cool something like that i want to golf but i mean we can also my (laughs) golf game doesn't need to take that long we've seen it it it, it doesn't need that much attention but i think this is where we can kind of help roll even more and Mm -hmm. uh if you're willing we're willing and i think that's where we want to go with it definitely um the the other part that I can see the foundation helping out in the future, I've had a few other widows actually contact me, um, uh, both from the OPP and uh, want to do fundraising events and be able to hand out scholarships in their spouse's name. So we're going to help um, uh, co- coordinate um, other scholarships in the future uh, in name of first responders. Um, Excellent. I think it's, you know what? You have yeah. us now as a resource to to, yeah. to share that message. Well, Even if you. it's a 10-minute message, we have them all on and we discuss or we, we get in touch somehow, we kind of keep sending this message further mm-hmm. and further. It's such an important message. Thank you. To, to keep rolling with. And uh, you have our unlimited support and it's going to start with getting these books out. We talked about it. I'm going mm-hmm. to approach my health and safety committees, my management teams, and I'm going to keep trying to push and push and push because now that I've read the book, I've actually felt the book, I've lived your story through the book as much as I could. Um, it's something that needs to be experienced and shared with everybody. And I need to to kind of step back here because I want to know if, how Sarah's doing. Did the, has the book and everything that you've done, all of these accomplishments, mm-hmm. is that helping Sarah? It definitely has. Um, every time that I get the opportunity to speak in front of a group and share Sylvain's story and talk about him, even if it can get very emotional, it helps me with healing. Um, I think this is something that people don't realize when you're grieving is that you want to talk about your person. And uh, I know I've had some people close to me say, you know, we're worried about bringing him up because it'll make you sad. And Um, I think that's probably something that people don't realize is that it's okay. It's okay if I'm sad about him, but I I like to talk about him. So being able to do all these things in name of Sylvain and um, definitely helps me with my healing process. I've also had a lot of help. Like I I spoke about other widow groups, uh, making connections with other people that are going through the same thing. That helped me immensely. And then I've also got a really great group of close friends and family and uh, I met a I met a wonderful man not long ago and fell in love again. And we uh, recently got married and are, have expanded our family because he has two kids as well. So having well, this is a perfect um, time. To yeah. Show this picture. <laughs> sure. To show honestly, mm-hmm. that picture to me is resilience. Mm-hmm. That's what that picture is. And you said that you came into that family, this mm-hmm. this uh, new marriage with three children of your own mm-hmm. who are all involved in rep hockey. Oh yes. Which <laughs> anybody in Ontario or pretty much Canada and Northern U S will understand. But if anybody is out there that is not familiar with the rep hockey world, it's all consuming. <laughs> um, you have, and then you, you added two stepchildren. So you have five mm-hmm. step, five children in the mm-hmm. family now. And you decided to go back to school. I did. Yeah. And you're a college <laughs> student during the pandemic, during your book rollout, during your marriage, during your um, family of five, all five kids involved in something, not all the three or three of them are hockey, you said, or four? Yeah. Three hockey, one basketball, the other one school sports. So, yeah. And, they're and all the range you said was nine, nine to 17. to 17. 
Yeah. And there's four different schools involved as well? Uh, yeah. Between the five kids, they're at four different schools right now. <laughs> it's, 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 for any of us to complain that we're busy or retired or exhausted, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lost complaint. And we can, we're can we allowed to, Sarah, look back in awe and wonder and, um, and in pride and say, mm -hmm. Um, you're a, an amazing, resilient, strong individual who is doing amazing things. And oh, I know um, COVID is around and I know it's going to be tough to not give you a hug the next time I ever see you, <laughs> if it's possible to do an in-person chat or whatnot. But I'm sending you one now. All of my colleagues are sending you one now. And I can't wait to see the book there it's again i'm going to pull it up again it is called marvelous marvelously <laughs> don't forget your roots and i'm not going to explain why i said marvelously because the title of the book is is very appropriate and very much part of the story of the book itself mm -hmm. it, it, it's the messages in there and i was kind of amazed at that where where can people find it where can uh, they get so the book yeah, it's available on Amazon as well as Indigo or in our local chapters here in Belleville. So is Indigo online? They Indigo an is online? an online chapter store, basically. And, and this would be the local chapters. Yeah. You in front of it must have been a surreal feeling to see it, your name it was and your uh, story they on don't the just, shelf. Yeah, they don't just automatically put books on the shelves. You have to uh, get a, you have to go through an approval process, and I had to meet with the manager, and she had to read it, and um, you know decide if it was appropriate and if they think they would sell them or not. So and we then have they some just, fantastic news yeah. for December. Yeah, they. Just I told don't me. know that. Okay, I was going to say I don't know if you can share it. <laughs> I think I can. Yeah. Uh, can. I hope you do. Yeah. So the local chapters here is going to be. Um, endorsing me as their December author of the month. Um, so I, you know, I recorded a small video taping yesterday and they'll, um, they're basically going to advertise the book for me and uh, which is really great. Cause uh, I think, it, like you said, it, it needs to be out to everybody. Honestly, um, congratulations <clears throat> with that. I know that wasn't your goal, <laughs> but you are definitely seeing the steam, the momentum that's building with the, with the need for what you're yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is a heavy, it's a heavy topic for all of us. And I think that you have brought your story and your resourcefulness forward very, very well. And I was honestly a little anxious about this podcast because it's a very fine line of appropriateness, of relevance, of, of just not needing to retell the story in the book, but your story, your story is amazing and it needs to be told. And I, I think we accomplished that to some extent today. I think we For did. Sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm super grateful. Now, I'm going to switch gears one last time. Mm -hmm. Everyone on my podcast, the first time they're on anyway, I ask the same three questions to, and you're probably not expecting these. Nobody, nobody <laughs> is. Um, and they're completely, completely unrelated to anything we've talked about. It's just to let us to get to know the guest and who they are. <laughs> um, the one thing this podcast tries to do, it's called offload delay. And in our world of paramedics, I don't know if you're aware, we spend a lot of our time waiting to offload our patients in the emergency mm -hmm. department. And at that time, we're with the officers, right? We're with the mm -hmm. police officers. We're with the firefighters. We're with the corrections people. We're with the families. And that's kind of our hockey room dressing room chat, like the real world chat. So I named it that to be kind of a fly in the wall in that world. Mm -hmm. There's a second part of it that's about delaying our offload, offloading our mental baggage. It's kind of a more serious side of it. But the fly on the wall thing was just to give us responders a voice and to kind of just say it the way it is. So that being said, if you could be a fly on a wall in <laughs> anyone's world, in any person's setting, and uh, are you able to say who you may really want that insight with or? That's really a tricky question. Um, yeah, that's tough. The, yeah, only, we'll uh, yeah. the only thing that comes to mind and, 
it's a tough one is um, I would love to be a fly on the wall in the WSIB case managers room because I'm sure you get this as well, but uh, I'm still fighting uh, Sylvain's WSIB case uh, for three and a half years now. They've been trying to tell me that his death was not work-related and I keep appealing it uh, with the help of uh, a really great lawyer. And I think it's just awful what they do to a lot of first responders that finally do get the courage to get some help and take time off and then aren't getting the benefits they deserve or the, you know, the financial um, help. Um, I'm just floored by the amount of people that have told me um, the problems that they're still encountering. So I think this is still another huge area where a lot of change has to happen. So uh, thank you. Thank you That's for the first that thing answer. that came to mind. <laughs> Honestly, and I think you're not, I know you're not alone with that. Mm-hmm. We're often, not only the responder world, but that's the one we know. We're, we're dumbfounded by what we have to kind of justify as needing insurance, as needing mm-hmm. the compensation for something that we've paid into for so long. Mm-hmm. And it's always a denial, it seems. Mm-hmm. You, you're immediately denied and then you have to prove otherwise. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. So the next one, this will be interesting because most of my guests are responders themselves. Mm -hmm. You have kids and you have, I need to know, or I want to know the smelliest place you've ever been. (laughs) Yeah. So that's not that hard for me because I would consider myself a first responder for 20 years of lifeguarding. Of course. It's very similar, right? We respond to emergencies around the aquatic environment where par- paramedics won't go in the water or <laughs> firemen right. won't go in the water and get people. Right. So I would definitely say, uh, pool change rooms. It? It's a, <laughs> the moist, damp, oh, yeah. Yeah. humid <laughs> change rooms. And I, I okay, good, good answer. And mm-hmm. I didn't mean to insult your, oh, no, your, not at your all. experience. No, no, no. Um, and, and I know we didn't bring it up, but it's actually still in the back of your mind, is it not? That an aquatics coordinator is still a very desirable position that you were thinking one yeah. day, maybe you never know, but at least the drive is you have the drive still. You said, yeah, for sure. It's hard when you do a career for 20 years and then, you know, my life got flipped upside down when Sylvain passed away and I had to reevaluate what my priorities were. And at the time when he passed away, I went back to work for a little bit and realized um, it just didn't gel with my personal life and being able to make my kids my priority right now. And uh, as we were sharing the other day, my my old job came up again. And of course, you know, there's something in the pit of my stomach just wanting to do it again because I, I loved what I did. And I thought I would be in that job until I retired. Um, For everyone, everyone listening out there yeah. in our area between phone calls with Sarah and I, her previous job of long time, long standing came up as a permanent post. Mm-hmm. And her and uh, Sarah and I joked about you know what, how ironic that as we're talking and you're, you're mentioning your, your love for aquatics, that this has come up, but you also mentioned it's a chapter of your life, right? And it's kind of, sometimes those chapters are done and sometimes it's a new chapter that yeah, takes over for, for sure. the old one. So uh, I, I can appreciate though the rank smells that can come from, <laughs> yeah. it's funny though, because so far all of my guests, the worst smell generally stems from humans of some sort. Yeah, probably. It's, it's people are just absolutely probably of everything out there. We think animals or chemicals, but humans mm-hmm. are definitely top of that list. Now, <laughs> the last one's really, really easy. The third question I ask everybody is you're allowed one food the rest of your life. You can only eat one thing. What's it going to be? doesn't Ice matter how I, what kind, though. Any kind? Chocolate. Chocolate Any kind. Yeah. Cream. Chocolate's definitely my favorite. Very good. That's an easy one. You didn't even hesitate. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Excellent. I um, I wish I could send you some right now. I, I <laughs> wish I could um, thank you in person, but it's 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 time to to let you go for now, and to thank you again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been an amazing guest. You're an amazing person. You're super super strong, resilient, and your energy is questionable i don't know where you get it uh to to do what you're doing but you're obviously driven you have a drive in you and you've been ignited and we're here for you to support that and take it as far as we can 
Well, thank you so much for having me, Brad, and You're for welcome. all your support, because uh, it's great. It's great to put out a story and put out your book and share all your personal stuff. But then it can be nerve wracking not knowing what the reception is going to be. So thank you well, for your support and recognizing what this book could do for people. You've, uh, it's not only the book, it's what you you personally have done and continue to do. And um, if you need anything, we're here. And thank you isn't enough, but I'm going to thank you. Thank and you. I look forward to talking to you soon. Maybe we'll get you on with somebody, another guest, another person in one of your panels, committees. Maybe you got the premier on here. Maybe <laughs> I, I don't know what powers you have. They seem limitless. So I'll just roll with that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go now. It's been a great talk. It's been really good. Thank you. I know it's going to spread a message, a very important message, a long way. And we're going to be in touch soon. And keep your chin up. You're doing amazing work. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll chat soon. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Whoa, um, that was heavy. That was deep, but that was absolutely amazing. Uh, Sarah has now been introduced to you. The way that I've come to know Sarah, and I need to again. Tell everybody, I can't say it enough. Don't forget your roots by Sarah Routier. It's available on Amazon, Indigo online. And if you're in the area, if you're near the Belleville chapters, it's it's also available there. We had the picture of Sarah pointing it out um, right there. That's the shelf. It's under reference. Um, my promise is I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight all the employers that I know, all of my unions, my committees to get this brought forward to our world. Um, Sarah's relation was most close to the policing world, but we're all responders, and I think we're gonna we're gonna roll with this. And I hope anybody out there who's needing to reach out to somebody doesn't hesitate to reach out to any of the resources that we've mentioned. Um, Sarah's foundation is another place where if you're looking to help, if you're looking to provide your input your your contribution uh the foundation the sylvan Routier foundation the memorial foundation is a great place to start i know some of these topics can be triggering i know some of them can be a little tough but sarah is jumping head first and not looking back and providing a fantastic voice for all of us so thank you again sarah um that's not the last we're going to hear of you, that's for sure. I need to also thank uh, for supporting us. I've got your back 911. Uh, they have their website, I've got your back 911.com. They are a tremendous place to purchase merchandise, to go and donate to their foundation, to go and seek help. They have references on their website as well. Um, and they have really cool swag. Their merch is cool. You can't say enough about it. It's popular. They're super busy. And they kick the money right back to us first responders for mental health awareness and PTSD prevention. Thank you also to DeanBlundell.com. Without him, Dean Blundell and his entire network, this podcast would not be possible. And they've been a fantastic resource support team. And I'm proud to say that I'm part of their network. As far as this podcast, Offload Delay, um, it's available through deanblundell.com, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and soon on Amazon Music. They're lagging a bit, but it'll be on there soon. But the audio versions are there. Um, we also have a YouTube channel, Offload Delay, which is where you can watch today's podcast and see some of the pictures we showed and meet Sarah a little more intimately than you would just on an audio pod offload underscore delay for Instagram and Twitter and YouTube is the channels offload delay. I do have a Facebook, but it's much less used. It's under Brad Hopper. That was a journey. I've been looking forward to bringing everybody for a while now, but I've been uh, admittedly anxious. Thank you, Sarah, for bringing your story 
for helping us. And honestly, me personally, you've already started my journey towards looking a little more deeply into my own mental well-being. So thank you for that. Till next time, stay safe. Um, look out for each other. And don't forget, you can always reach out to me at offload dot delay 14 at gmail.com if you ever need to share an idea reach out if you want to suggest someone that we should have on someone you want to introduce any of that you can definitely find me at that email and that's it for now i hope uh you stay safe and thank you again sarah it's not enough but we'll chat soon